Welcome, 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 Beauty and the Bee Radio. What's going on? We got K West and Tony Rock in the building. Hi. What up, what up, what up? Hello, world. Hello, world. What's going on? You so busy this week. I'm so happy that I got a little bit of time with you this week. Oh, uh, no, it's nothing. K West called me. That's my man. You know, K like, West, thank you. You got it. Yo. Thanks, Tony. The most interesting. Through. The most interesting. <laughs> That's something to stay on. The most interesting. But uh, thanks, to Tony, for coming through. Except mm-hmm. for the invitation. Mm-hmm. You know, I know he's a busy man, but every time he's in town, I like to take advantage of that time, and he came through. So I appreciate that, man. You got it. You got it. Right, right, Rock right, the right. world. Brooklyn's in the building. Stand up, yeah. yo. Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you always say that when you're on stage and people like they say anybody from New York sometimes they lie and they be like, oh yeah, Brooklyn, and they're from somewhere else, but you're really yeah. from Brooklyn. Whenever they say Brooklyn, I always want to know exactly where because people just right. like to say Brooklyn. I'm like, give me a street and a give me a street and a corner. <laughs> it does. That. I don't it's know none of that. All I know is I've been exactly. To See, because I'm not why, from they there. They don't know I'm gonna say that. That's right. like the next question. It then, might be then like I don't even know the area. Is it nine one seven? 917 is uh, that's cell phones. That's oh, okay. Like, that's like, you know, home Okay, phones 718. And, yeah, that's, that's Brooklyn. See, I do know what's a Brooklyn. I got a little bit of Brooklyn. So, what's going on with our hot topics, K West? There's a lot going on. We had the VMAs this week. Yeah, VMAs, and uh, it was. Nicki Minaj I, cleared her beef with uh, Taylor Swift. I mean, they got on stage together. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean you know, it, <laughs> it was. I can't even, like, register what I saw. What did you see? I mean, Nicki was like, what's up? What's good? Oh, right on the... stage. Like, let's get the cracky. Is and that people... for real? But I mean, to me, it's real. Okay. I mean, as much as people may say it's fake, I 100% think it's real. What do you What do you mean by you think it's real? In terms of she was really like, what's up? She kind of ran. You talking, all, her... that, that, you no, talking I, all that smack earlier. In I, the press. I truly believe she was genuinely saying like, yo, what's the deal? What's really good? But it's what. Tw- 3,000 people in the building, everybody has security. Did you re- did she really think there was going to be a fight there? And that's the part I'm talking about. And I think about. Miley kind of handled her. It's like, if it ain't going to pop off, it's no need to even open your mouth. But right. Miley so, handled her. Right. Miley, had, she was like, what's good? I mean, we all do press. We all know how they just manipulate the press in any way. So, good luck on you winning your anaconda. And she kind of like kept it rolling. I was like, kind of like, oh my gosh, Miley. Yeah. She got, she gave her a little bit back of that energy and yeah. kept it moving. Yeah. Like, Miley kept the show going the whole entire time, to be honest. But she a good host. I didn't, I only watched that and Kanye's uh, hour-long presidential speech. <laughs> so, I fell asleep on that twice, or at least I didn't uh, watch it. I had company the time it was on. Then I was like, okay, DVR, well, let's see what he said. And then I forgot again. Like So apparently, I can't remember, but they put all this music behind it. Do you, what? What did you think of his speech? <laughs> Well-deserved. Kanye's not, Kanye's not boring. Kanye's definitely not boring. Definitely not boring. And, I mean, at the end of the day, Kanye's Kanye. And there's a little bit of, there's always a little bit of like, as far as myself, there's always something that resonates with me in in a Kanye rant. What? Uh, Every time, every time there's a rant, it's always something, a piece of it. I'll go, you know what? That was 100% true. Or that is entirely accurate. Was it, of this speech, the thing, I think the point that he was going on, I don't understand award shows, bruh. Yeah, that was, that was true. It was like, you know, you you work hard, you put your blood, sweat, and tears into your product, your project. And then they say, you, okay, we take five guys. Let's say it's hip hop. Right. We take right. five guys from hip hop uh-huh. who we think did really well this right. year. Right. right. And we're going to pick one of you five guys to be the winner. Right. It's like, does that mean negate that what the other four dudes did or, you know, the work they put in for their project? Does it mean it, it's of lesser value to the consumer because they didn't win this thing that, you know, that's what supposed he's... to recognize what they, what, they, what they did? Right. And then what about the, the other five guys that didn't get chosen for that category because they, they didn't, didn't sell enough. Right. They didn't sell enough to be looked at, but the work probably stood out even more so. Or, right. or let's, I'll go with Kanye on this one. I'll go back to last year's uh, uh, what Grammys or uh-huh. man when uh, McLemore won over Kendrick. Oh yeah. yeah. That's the thing. It's like who who picks? Who's the guy? Who who's that, the that governing body right. that, that says these are the guys we're gonna nominate? Right. Like who's I think that, that each gov- each award ceremony has their standards. Billboards is based on how much they sold, right? Okay. Grammys is based on what the the Grammy is. This is this is these are the facts, or this is what you think? Well, billboards is based on how much you sold. The okay. billboard awards okay. are based strictly right. based. VMAs, I really don't know what their standards are. It's like popularity. 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 So okay, yeah. So I mean, kind of we. 
We I need mean, to know the standards. We need a little more transparency. Well, my question is, do, <laughs> do MTV even show videos still? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. So, so that's really that's my question. Right. It's like the Billboard. You're right. Billboard is actually it's actually relevant in music. You right. check the Billboard. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? MTV is just a platform that showcases the videos to begin with. They're not. They don't. It's not a label. They don't make music. No. So why do they get to just say we're gonna critique music? Mm-hmm. BET Awards. BET doesn't make music. They don't have a. It's not. A, it's no BET label. Right. So right. why are we? giving awards for what? Because somebody at BET liked the video? Deborah Lee, is he, he's a Deborah Lee favorite artist, so I don't get it. I don't know. Hey, what's up, what Deb? How you doing? Talking, man? I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. Right, so that's what resonated with Kanye. They'll go, Kanye. Yeah. Yeezy taught us. <laughs> <laughs> so let's Do you really think you're going to run for 2020? I'm just, no, I'm I just, nah. I mean, hold on, hold no, on, hold on, no. hold on. We had the Schwarzenegger in the office. We had the Reagan in the office. And we, and we got Donald Trump running right now. And we got Trump running. Right, but I don't, I hey, and you got these nuts. <laughs> oh wow, you do. I mean, really? The dude, hey, the dude, third, what? In North Carolina, South Carolina, he got what? And he's, he's he's running number three. You never know, Kanye. I can see it now. Anything's possible. Grand Park. Anything's, Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I'm still, I'm on Hillary. I mean, I, I, I haven't got off Hillary's thing yet, but um, I don't know. You gotta start looking into like. When it gets closer to the time, yeah, I want to see what people's platforms are and what they really believe. What they in really, and... really standing for. Yeah, this you're is gonna, gonna do, be. Very... I want to know what you're gonna do for the hood first and foremost. Right. I want to know what you're gonna do about education in this country. Mm-hmm. I want to know how we're gonna, you know, how we're gonna take the majority of the people that are on living below the poverty poverty level mm-hmm. and help them. You know, I, I got a bunch of questions, so. We need when to it gets set up closer. a panel. Yeah, yeah, we need to set up a panel and make sure that they get asked those questions. Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Did you see Macklemore's performance where he brought out, um, who was it, um, Grandmaster Kaz and Melly Mel? No, did I you did see? not. Oh, that was very how New was York. It? How that was it? Yeah, the represent. That was excellent. Well, that was really? Uh-huh. It was excellent. It was excellent. I, no, I didn't see any. Of, all I saw was uh, I pulled up Kanye's speech in the airport the next morning when I was mm-hmm. flying out of town. So I didn't see any of that. So, no, they, they did something. Um, did you see that? No, but I saw him at Roscoe on Sunday. Who, Melly Mel and Cass? <laughs> no, <Matt> Mel. <laughs> he was at Roscoe's. <laughs> yeah. was at Roscoe's. Got him on Obama special. <laughs> did you say hi? No, I was like, oh, shit, that was Macklemore. They mm-hmm. were just walking by. Mm-hmm. They were leaving, so that's why I was just like, I didn't know, because I was talking to people. Mm-hmm. And, then that, and it was a fan that just went through it and took a picture with him. As I haven't said that, said that name, that's why it's like white people can just be so unassuming. Right. Like a white guy could be wildly famous and right. just walk down the street and you wouldn't even know who the fuck he is. I oh. was, you know what? I have this story. I was in um, Las Vegas, right? And I was getting on the elevator and this guy got on and he had his own bag in his hand. And I was like, Charles, you know, you look just like Steven Spielberg. He said, I am Steven Spielberg. I was like, oh, okay. But I mean, I was so like taken aback because I'm like, well, why are you carrying your Like, you don't want to call the bellman or something? Like, I got two bags. I'm like, That's bellman. another reason why white guys get winning because they're so unassuming. <laughs> They don't. They don't do all that flashy stuff. Right. right. It was just like, like a black right. dude would have somebody carry his phone upstairs because just because he made a, you know, it's like, come on, man. Why people like, what, why am I pay this guy? That's right. how they stay rich. Yes. Why would I pay somebody to carry my bag upstairs? I have both arms working. Right. And I'm Dang. sitting up there like, okay, this is Steven Stewart. And the only thing I could think of is I was like, well, you look like Steven. So I am Steven. So I was like, oh, okay. Like I, I didn't even know what to follow that with because I was just so shocked. I like, should have been like, that's why you look like him. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> right. That's like, okay. So, actually, it was a. Uh, I had an Uber driver last week. He said mm. he actually picked up Steven Spielberg, and he didn't even leave him a tip. Oh, y'all tip Uber drivers? I, I thought it was. How do you? I don't I just know. get out. I was like I, peace. I didn't. I didn't know that was. That's oh, right. It, yeah. com- it, it goes in your thing, right? No, you know what it is. When I first started taking Ubers, uh, I would try to tip them, and it was like, no, sir, tip. It's, 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 you know, once you credit, we charge your credit card. Right. right. Three or four times, I'm like, oh, okay, bet. So, okay. Right. I think it's something included, at least a 15 or 18 percent gratuity. Well, he, I guess he was thinking he was gonna come up, so you know. What I'm saying. Yeah. See, then he shouldn't even spoke on that. That's not even. That's, that probably goes against their policy and everything. I mean, he was feeling like Meek Mill. I want to know no. where my tip at. There you go. All right. So, I always call out Meek Mill now, you know, like, I want to know why he created that record. So if I find something bogus, I say, I want to know. <laughs> so. I What's going on that. with the Straight Outta Compton numbers? Is it still number one? Still number one. Is still it? number one. Still number one. And I'm, I think they might be for another week. Really? I really think so. I mean, what's coming out this weekend? What's coming Labor out this weekend? Maybe they weekend? 
What's coming up? Later? Oh no, Labor Day this weekend is probably gonna go. It's probably the numbers are probably gonna go up again. Yeah, yeah, it's probably gonna soar. Yeah, because you still have those people who haven't seen it. You still got people who want to see it again, and you got those haters who are like, man, I ain't got nothing else to do this weekend. I might as well go see it. Yeah, I would Did definitely see it again. Yeah, oh my God, I loved yeah, it. Yeah, I would I see it, it again. It was incredible. I mean, you got the bootleggers out though. You got the bootleggers out. We don't support bootleggers. I mean, hey, shout out to the homie on Chris on 54. Thanks no, for that. No, we don't good support copy. that. Huh? We don't support that. We have our oh. sad cards in here. We do not support <laughs> that. I ain't got a sad card. I got a black card. <laughs> really? I got a Russ card. What's up, Russell? <laughs> See you later, brother. See? <laughs> Speaking of Russell, Russell has been very instrumental in helping you reach yes. certain platforms. Or yes, what did you Russell work? has taken a liking to the kid. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy about it. Because you have a what a new show coming out that's on TV One. What yeah, I have lead? a. Uh, it's a, it's called the Big Leaf. The Big it's Leaf. About okay, a the medical weed. marijuana dispensary. Okay. It's, like, mm. it's like a sitcom set in a medical oh, marijuana right dispensary. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Oh, thank yes. you. And uh, Russell actually, uh, Dorian Forbes, mm-hmm. my, my my man in Atlanta, wrote the script. Okay, so it's a film, not a not a TV show. It's, it's a, a TV show. Yeah. Okay, okay, so it's something that's gonna come out every week. But I'm gonna give you the whole story. Okay, cool. so <laughs> Dorian wrote the wrote, Dorian wrote the script. He got it in Russell's hands. Right. Russell wrote, read it, loved it. Mm. Russell put up 100 percent of the money to shoot this pilot. Wow. Exactly. Thank you, Russell. He wanted it done a certain way. He mm-hmm. put the money up all himself. We got it done. Right. Uh, it's been floating around for a while. It's on YouTube. It's mm-hmm. been seen some places. We we screened it at the uh, All Deaf one night. Oh, okay. And a uh, few people have been looking at it, and you know it's been getting a little bit of heat. So now TV One came in, and they're interested in making it a sitcom. Okay. okay. But they have reservations about a TV show that focuses around marijuana. I was going to ask that. Because TV gonna... One is not no, because TV One doesn't know how to run a network. They don't know how to push the envelope and be edgy but still be funny. Oh. So they're scared. Right. Gotcha. But they're going to test it on September 15th. It was supposed to be yesterday, September 1st. They mm-hmm. pushed it back because they wanted to give themselves more time to promote it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they're going to test it on the 15th. If it's the the numbers are good and the response from people is good, mm-hmm. they're willing to make it a series. Mm-hmm. So that's why I need everybody to support it on the 15th. If you mm-hmm. like it or hate it or you think we need to change this or that, let us know. Whatever your feedback is, let us know. We need to have a live social media thing We do, going yeah. On. I think I'm going to live stream, uh, live tweet while it's on. Yeah, you need to yeah, yeah. get the real, like, what, yeah. what y'all think? I want I want to know. I want to know! <laughs> like, and, I, you know, I'll definitely help you out with that. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. How, I mean, Granny, how did... When did you first meet Russell? Uh, I mean, of course, years ago. Yeah, long time ago. Long. How New I'm, York? I met Russell in New York when he used to hang with my brother. Mm-hmm. And I would just be the kid sitting there quiet, listening to that conversation. You know, like I didn't have anything to offer at the time. I started doing stand-up, and I would see Russell around New York sometimes, coming to comedy clubs, like, oh, shit, Russell Simmons in the room, you know? Right. And uh, fast forward, I do Def Jam. When they brought Def Jam back, like, maybe 10 years ago, remember they tried to bring it back? Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, they did it in L.A. Mm-hmm. Right. I remember and that. With Shaq I, and all them. Yeah, there. yeah. Okay. I was on the show. Okay. And uh, my boy Garrick Dixon was sitting behind Russell because he wanted to see what Russell's re- reaction was going to be to my set. And when I got off stage, Russell said, that guy's going to be a star. Mm-hmm. And then ever since then, like, the ball just started taking up, you know, rolling. And the momentum started building. And Russell would have a project. And he would say, let's get that dude, man. Let's mm-hmm. get that rock kid on it. Or Russell had a show. It was like, hey, let's get Tone on the show. Mm-hmm. Or he had a pilot he wanted to do a table read for let's get tone in on it so he just you know it's been but reaching out a lot but you got pretty lucky with like cause that it's not just no it's no luck no luck it's a gift from God it's a gift from no God luck. it's a you talent right luck. yeah okay I don't want to call it luck I just meant that it's not just Russell saying hey get this kid on this I mean you've had some success I think um, Jada Pinkett and him with the show yeah yes all, yes all yes I've been you fortunate were, yeah you've been very fortunate yeah. with that the, um, so what do you think was your big break for you was it stand up or did you start doing was it equally as um, TV well, stand up's my first love. First stand up's okay. where I started. That's what I wanted to do. When I was in school and teachers were like, you got to focus. I'm like, nah, I'm going to be a comic. I don't need none of this stuff. <laughs> so, so you were the class clown? Stand up was the first love. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But uh, you, your whole career is a succession of big breaks. There's mm-hmm. no one big break that's okay. bigger than the other because one big break leads to the next big break. Okay. So it's, you know, it's a whole series of big breaks mm-hmm. in your career. And you just hope that it keeps elevating and, you know, the, the, the breaks get bigger. You know what I mean? And lead to bigger things. You know, they got a movie called The Breaks coming out on VH1. I peeped that. Did you? What? No. Why, are you laughing? No, I didn't know. I, it was a funny segue. I didn't, I, I didn't know if he was joking or not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wasn't there a movie already called The, the Breaks? The, the, I don't know, but it's called, it's, called the orig, it's called the original film, and it's come up like maybe this week or something. Like, I just saw a commercial on the, I wish I had a little clip. Who's in it? Uh, uh, the Man. Method Man. Um, no, <laughs> no, no, Method Man. Uh, Method's in the building. I forgot who was all in it. 
It was a nice cast. It's a nice cast. <laughs> okay, I'm I gotta, sorry. I, I was like, check out the breaks. Yeah, when you said the breaks, I was just literally just saying that. But I mean, it is a film <laughs> called The Breaks coming out with Method Man. It's like brand new. Coming up okay. like in a couple. I gotta of, check it out. In a week or two. On it's VH1. about the on VH1. On VH1 it's part of their original fall. film. And it's about like um, hip hop stars trying to get established and get some recognition. I don't, is it all East Coast based? It's about their plight. I, want, I think it's all East Coast. Is it really? Yes. You should know about I, it. I gotta check it out. You gotta check it out. I think you would enjoy it. So, what do, um, what's your, <laughs> What's good? <laughs> what is it like when you're prepping to do a show? Because you just did Fat Tuesday. Tell us what Fat yeah. Tuesday was all about. Fat Tuesday show was interesting because mm -hmm. Fat Tuesday show was the 20 year anniversary of Fat okay. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, Guy Tory created Fat Tuesday mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, there used to be the uh, Comedy Act Theater in in the hood. I don't know, I don't know exactly where it was. It was like oh, somewhere. Oh, like Lamar Park or something. Yeah. Okay. The Comedy Lamar Act Park. Theater. Michael Williams ran that. It was the only black comedy room in L.A. at the mm -hmm. time. Okay. And then uh, you know all of the black celebrities would go to the hood to see black comedy. Right. Support black comedy. This is before I even stepped foot in L.A. This uh -huh. is just the stories I used to hear. And uh, then the watch, the, uh, not the watch riots, but the uh, the L.A. riots with Rodney King verdict happened. And they burned. No, that up. was a long. Time it was a long time ago, yeah. And then the, the, the riots happened, and the theater closed down because nobody was going into the hood anymore to okay. see black comedy. So okay, the so that's Crenshaw. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. then Guy Tory came to Sunset Boulevard. Okay. And the comedy store agreed to let him do a night there in the smallest room they had. Right. Right. As a test, right. like to just to test it. So mm -hmm. they gave him a month run. Mm -hmm. He did four Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was packed every Tuesday, mm -hmm. and it got so packed they moved it downstairs to the biggest room they have at mm -hmm. the comedy store. And it continued to be sold out weekly, the biggest names in the room, the biggest comics on the show, and it ran for 20 years. And Guy Tory created that. And uh, last night we had the 20 year anniversary. 20 years for Fat Tuesday? 20 years for Fat Tuesday. Consecutively. Yes. That's dope. That's Shout out to Guy Tory, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? Hey, yeah, Joe, can my brush back, man? Ever since you was on that damn, you know, post office track, I ain't seen my brush, bro. <laughs> oh, when he used to, I remember that. Where my funny's at? There you <laughs> my go. Socko. You just recently, you started the Tony Rock Comedy Lounge. He was your first guest. On oh, the, the Rock Lounge, yeah. The Rock Lounge. Yeah, the Rock Lounge. It's my podcast. I got a podcast. It's, uh, I wanted to do something different. I always try to do something different than what mm -hmm. everybody else is doing. So the podcast is audio and video. Right. So you can watch it on YouTube or you can just listen to it on, uh, on your podcast. the podcast link. Yeah, so uh, Guy Tory was the first comic. I had Guy Tory and Maranzio Vance on the first mm -hmm. episode. And uh, I got Mike Hill coming up from ESPN. Okay. I have uh, my si my little sister's going to be in L.A. in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to try to get her on and just let her tell, tell y'all stories about me. So are all your are, are your families are is everyone like funny? Do they have all like every last one of my siblings is hilarious. They are. They, they're not all comics, but they they all could be. They all could. Be. Every last one of them could be a stand-up comic. Yes. So at every family reunion, it's always my best and jokes. Always jokes. Are always a lot of fun. Great food. A lot of fun. It's it's the best time ever. I can only imagine the dirty dozens back then, man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's, it's always a good time. Speaking of which, who's some of your comments, your favorite comments today? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I've known you for a little while, and, you know, when I come to you, some of your shows and see you host, I hear you say that, but personally, who's some Wait, of like my, like my, yo, my, yo, like your top five, your oh, top Oh, my top three. five, my top five, easy. Uh, Richard Pryor. Oh, yes. Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Patrice O'Neill, George Carlin. Ooh. I've heard you say that before. That's it, actually. that's it. Who's the, way? who's the, next to Carlin, would you say? Patrice O'Neill. Patrice O'Neill is, he passed away, rest in peace to the homie. Yo, Patrice O'Neill oh. was the coldest. He it was so effortless, man. He would just be talking, and you would realize, like, oh shit, I've been laughing and crying the whole time. Like, he just, he's just one of the dopest, man. Wait, can I can I not curse? Okay, shit. Right. go right I'm ahead. I was making sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Patrice no, O'Neill, because I was like, I kind of remember that name. Like, you know, you've seen something. He has a special called Elephant in the Room. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what this Elephant in the Room, Patrice O'Neill. Watch that and then holler at me. All right. Okay, so we gotta we have some work to do. Yes. Who are some of your favorite comments today? Today, uh, there's not a lot of cats that I really think are funny uh, today. Um, I'm keeping it a thousand. I mean, I've been in LA for a long time, and I see what I notice in LA is uh, there's a lot of comics that do stand up to get into something else. Mm -hmm. Like they do stand up because they think it's an easier route into acting. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so they they do stand up because it's like, okay, I'm not getting as many auditions. I'll do stand up too mm -hmm. to try to 
keep my face out there. And once they get a sitcom or a TV show or whatever, they'll never touch a mic again. And in New York, it's like comics that are like, we would do this if there was no opportunity to be on TV whatsoever. Right. We, do, we love this. This is the thing we love. That other stuff just happens for us because we do this very well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, when I got the sitcom, it was, I literally got the sitcom because the, the casting director, Monica Swan, mm-hmm. was sitting in the Laugh Factory. She saw me doing stand up and she called me over and said, You know what? You might be perfect for this sitcom that, I, that I'm casting. And she was like, Will Smith and his wife are doing a sitcom based on their lives. Mm-hmm. And I think you would fit this character perfectly. And I went in and read and got the part. But it was like, Yo, I just wanted to have a good set that night. Mm-hmm. That's all my focus was on was just killing the room. And all of the opportunities, most of the opportunities I've gotten in the acting world in the TV world have been because somebody saw me doing stand-up so you haven't stopped doing stand-up period since you started never never like never will I stop never thing. will I stop no I'll be like Bill Cosby like an old motherfucker sitting in a chair still doing stand-up huh? uh, I won't be dropping without, quaaludes without, yeah. I was about to say no quaaludes right well not as many oh. <laughs> It won't, be, it won't be 40 chicks. It might be two or three. Like, oh, you know. no. Oh, no, no. bro. <laughs> That's not funny. Like, they just... They you still laughing, have, but it's not it's funny. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but every month, it's like one more or two more. I'm like, this this month, it was like yes. at least two more. I'm like, We have to like 45 now, right? 46. 46. Like, that's a grip. I'm not saying he did it, but if 46 chicks accuse you of anything, you need to change your fucking approach. 46. Damn. <laughs> I want to know. If 46 chicks just, if 46, 46 chicks just said, yo, I don't fuck with Tony, he's an asshole, then I would have to change something. Something. You know what I mean? But your something. life is 46 dope, chicks you say, shit. you know, he dropped a quaalude in my drink and had his way with me. It's like, That's you did something, homie. Uh, you did something. Did you That's do that? Crazy. Have you ever done something nah, like that? Nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of drugs. Oh, okay. Are you? I am. You never smoked a weed? I never smoked a weed. I never smoked a cigarette. I never did a Molly, never did E, never did Coke. Mm-hmm. I'm scared of drugs. Me neither. I don't want to take. I don't want to be that guy. This is the statistic that like he did it one time and he died right there. It's like, come right. on, man, really? Right. All right. right. Liquor, boom, let's go. I could do that all day, but you know, I can't do nothing else. Oh, okay. Some people, I think, like that was like something that they needed to be funny. Like I've seen a lot of comedians that they've used it as a crutch and it hasn't been a good thing. I've seen comics that uh, mm-hmm. I know. Uh, just one guy that popped in my head as soon as you said that, mm-hmm. and he's still doing stand up in L.A. Mm-hmm. He used to bomb all the time when I first saw him when he was first starting out right. and then he was started drinking like oh I just need to you know, relax a little bit before I go on stage and right. now this dude is a raging alcoholic wow. I see him now in the clubs and it's like his face don't even look the same and his eyes are red it's like and he's still bombing in the he, club like he's not very funny but oh. it's like at least he's comfortable now he's drunk as hell he's drunk as hell so so what is your process like before you do something like what, what before is it I do something bef- well before you <laughs> before what is it I'm but, doing like well comedy when oh, you're okay. going on stage when you're performing when you're hosting what is it is there a process for you because you know. hosting is a hosting I just go with the energy of the room hosting mm-hmm. I, I just go up and I my job as the host is to set the room for the comic that's coming on to perform right so it's like I got to get them I got to get them up but not too high up that he can't follow the, that the next comic can't follow me mm-hmm. I got to uh you know, engage the room so they they want to see a comedy show. Mm-hmm. So it's different when you're hosting. You you kind of setting up everybody else. Like I'm, I'm Magic Johnson. I'm just like assisting everybody else. Okay. Gotta be like when, when I do a set, when I'm you know on the show, right. My my goal is to be the best comic on the show. So do you research other comics that are going to be on there? No, no. I just get my material as tight as it possibly can be. Like do you last night. On somebody? L- no, I don't need to. I, I, I sometimes I write something and I just know. Like right. last night, for instance, I, right. I wrote a new joke last night about uh, for the twentieth anniversary show. Mm-hmm. Hadn't tested it anywhere. Didn't run it past anybody. I just knew this is gonna kill the room. Mm-hmm. So I put it. I did a strong, really strong joke up front to start the show to get them really engaged. Mm-hmm. And then I dropped a new joke right there, perfect. And it segued into something I had done before, and it was seamless. That's dope. I love right. and being around a lot of the comics. Shout out to my man Jay Phillips. Jay Phillips, a cat I like a lot, yeah, yes. I definitely Jay like Phillips, Jay. I, I, my boy, yes. Definitely. I love how you guys strategize before you go on stage in yeah. terms of, I'm going to put this joke right here, put this mm. right here. Yeah. And, you know, here's my audience. Let me feed it to my audience. Right. Have you noticed the different crowds in terms of L.A. versus New York? You know, in terms of, you know, L.A., this joke might work here, but compared yeah. to New York, this joke yeah. definitely ain't going to work. Yeah, that, that mm-hmm. definitely, that's definitely something you got to take into account. Not so much L.A., New York, because th- those are be- both metropolitan cities. People are pretty smart in both places. But when you go, like, down south, like Mississippi or something, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. It's like, man, you talk. Well, you know, Obama just recently said that, and they're like, wait, what the hell? What? Like, he's talking about our president? It's like, what is, what is he doing? Like, okay. You go below the Bible Belt, man. They don't. They they just like keep it simple, man. Women are crazy. You know, I, I just flew in. Airline food sucks. You, you know, basic. Keep it basic when you're down there. But metropolitan cities, they're pretty smart. Mm. Okay. I want to hear a joke. I'm, Is that off, hard? I'm, I'm off the clock right now. Nah, but tonight. You can hear a joke all you want, but they cost. Ooh. All Deaf Digital. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, but where can we hear you? Cause you're all always- Deaf Comedy Live every Wednesday, uh, Hollywood and Highland Inside Jokes Comedy Club. Mm-hmm. The third floor inside the movie theater, because people always come yes. and they text and me and say, I'm on the third floor, all I see is a the movie theater. I'm like, well, walk in the movie theater. <laughs> okay. That's where the comedy show's going. Go have a drink. Yeah. Come have a drink. Yeah, we got open ball from 8 to 9 every Wednesday, so you can come and get free drinks before the show starts. Mm-hmm. Uh, produced by Russell Simmons, hosted by yours truly. Uh, some of the hottest comics in LA, uh, some of the hottest audience members in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they Yo. be out. They be out. Oh, they, they, they it's funny. It's they like a, that's a show within yeah. itself. It's a fashion show before the comedy show. It is. What's up, I mean, Jeru? Yeah. It is truly a fashion show. Like people always hit me up. Okay, Wes, I know you can get me in there. What do I need to wear? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, shh. Close. At least you get that. I get the I get the text like five o'clock in the afternoon. Hey, me and my girls want to come to the show tonight. Okay, how many of y'all? There's five of us. Okay, please don't be late because it sells out every week. Yes. And then the sh- what time should we be there? Get there around eight thirty. Show should start around nine fifteen. Then I get a text at ten o'clock. Like, hey, we outside. We can't get in. Uh, yeah. That's the worst. Man. Every every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. W- women is just you know that's just y'all thing. Uh- are you bashing women? No, no, no. I love women. Women just, everybody knows that women just have, have a sense of entitlement. Mm. Women just feel like they don't, the rules don't pertain to them. Mm. You can't come outside and get us? It's like, shorty, show started. It's no hey, nah, hey, for real. Like, do you think I'm going to get people to make them get up out the seats so you can, can sit? I, I can vouch it that way. Yeah, women are entitled. Y'all, you know that. Y'all I don't entitled. know anything about that. I mean, don't I used to get seats, like... so I don't really know about that. Mm-mm. I don't know anything Three about styles. that. Three styles. Wait up. What, what, what? You know, you know. But you know what we talk about? Look, women, they go to a club in Hollywood. Hey, women go to a club in Hollywood, line out the door, won't even get on the line. They'll just wait for some dude walking and go, we can't go on with you. <laughs> True. We can't walk in with you. <laughs> it's me and my girls. We can't walk hey, in with you. So, yeah. We got two of them right Dudes here. Dudes can't do that. We can't see, is women we can't see girls walking right in the club here. and, and just we, like, yo. And, and we, we know, don't will. They're not waiting on lines. It's like... <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm used to just walking in. I don't know. I don't know anything other than that. Exactly. I just exactly. I'm, right. Exactly. Then if you know me, you really ain't gonna wait. Hmm. So we see that you have hashtags, Pretty Boy Tony. You like to get dressed and stuff like that. You talking about oh, women Pretty Tony? Effect. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I saw you one day. I thought I was looking at American Gangster. You had on an orange fur. Or Oh, oh, like, oh, I was this? in I was in Detroit. I was doing the show in Detroit. <laughs> and uh, the judge, you know the judge that uh, he's out here all the time. He has oh. like the colored suits on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He they came to the show yeah. okay. and uh, he had an orange fur coat on. And I'm like, yo, you got to let me rock that. He's like, well, you can't rock it without the hat, brother. And he set me up nice. I took a picture. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that no, was a judge. A judge. That was no his way. outfit. Yeah. Is that the one that is on, that went to jail this week? It's a judge that was, you judge know. Joe Brown? Yeah, he went to jail this week. Did he again? Yeah. Th- nah, it was it wasn't him. Oh, okay. No. Okay, because he's from oh Mathis. No, Mathis is from Shot. Is from the Shot. Judge, Judge Mathis from the Shot. Okay, so yeah. Okay, yeah. but when you said Detroit, I knew he was from Detroit. Yeah, I was in I the thought- D. You know, every it was so many colored fur coats in that audience. I know. Uh, Detroit is a doozy. Yeah. Shout out to the D, man. I get love out there. You do. Yo, Tom, I know you're a big Max fan, man. What y'all gonna do this season? Yo, man? I'm feeling very 86 right now with the Mets, man. I'm thinking we, I think we got the, the series. I think we heading to the series this year. Is that baseball? It's baseball. Baseball, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah it's ball. You lost me. We I'm sorry. Mets, the Mets won the World Series last in 1986, and I'm feeling of 86 vibe with yeah. this current team. Well, they team. said the 90s is coming back, so you're going back a little bit five years, four years earlier. Maybe it's the, the 90s is coming back. The 90s, you know, In it's what like regard? retro, retro music, film, the way that you fashion. know, fashion. So I mean, mm-hmm. if you want to bring it back like that, then I went could... shopping. Wait. I went shopping yesterday. I was trying to find an outfit for the show last night. Yo, where do people shop in Los Angeles? Like, where do you go when you want to get fresh in LA? Like, where where do you go, yo? I mean, on my way here. Beverly Center's done. It's I like, mean, it's, man, I can't. Like, I'm talking about stuff that we Just, wear. Where do you should get that at in LA? I thought you had a stylist because you always look. My stylist is in New York though. Oh, okay. So I'm tired of like paying her to ship stuff. I gotta pay her mm-hmm. her fee, mm-hmm. pay her for shipping the stuff, pay her to buy the stuff. It's like, yo, is there no way I can just go in LA and just get a pair of jeans or something like that? Okay, gotcha. Zars. 
Zara. Uh, somebody, somebody said Zara yesterday. Uh, too. Zara. I, I tweeted it like, no, I, um, I text, uh, sent a mass text out. That's, that's me, Zara. Yeah. Uh, Shouts out to all the stylists. Uh, Tony, you're a stylist in Los Angeles, holla at me, yo. Yo. Okay. But I don't want to look like a Metro. I don't want to do skinny jeans. I don't want a shirt to touch my knees. Make sure I want to look like toes. a dude that like girls, yo. <laughs> right. Make sure no you got shell no toes. disrespect to the dudes that don't like girls. I just like girls a whole lot, and I want to dress like a dude that like girls. Do you have kids, Tony? No, I don't. My pullout game is vicious. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Dean. <laughs> my pullout game is like, I time. I'm like time. Okay, we out. Oh, we out. Like a wake and bake. Yeah. Really? It's like riding a bull. Like I'm, I'm like, you think you gonna stay on a long time? No. No. Uh, I had a late start twice, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, shout out to my boys. Looking forward to it though. Looking forward to having really? children. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. You have a lot of nieces and nephews already. Yes, man. I'm Uncle Christmas. Oh. It's like when I come around, they know they're going to eat the stuff that they're not supposed to eat. Right. I'm going to let them play with whatever, whatever toy they want to play with that their moms or dad wouldn't let them touch. Here you go, kid. Knock yourself out. Mm, okay. I'm just a good time. I'm the uncle that's it's a good time whenever I come around. Shout out to Quan, Baby Matt. Yeah, shout out good? to Maddie. I uh, know. Speaking Kai, of Kai, Case. We did, um, for your, your my, you have the Tony Rock, My Rock Foundation. My Rock Foundation, yes. Right, and that's for diabetes awareness created. Yes. You uh, were there? Yeah, I was. We have some video. I was going to Get out of here. Yeah. Wait, you was at the Get Fit Statement? Yes, I was at the Get Fit Statement. Wow. Like, how do you even remember that? I'm sorry. It was 400 people there. I'm sorry. It was. It was a really nice packed event. It was like, it was like 300 girls in spandex, so I'm sorry if I don't remember. Brother. Everybody was working out. <laughs> do we have video? Where's the video? We do have video. Maron, what's up with that? Let's show the video. Beauty and the Beat Radio. Stay fit. Get or get right to stay fit. Yeah, yeah you know, you're going to Whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. Beauty and brain. But I mean, you're here for the cause. You're talking about yes. diabetes, yes. making awareness. So, what was this event all about today? What did we do today? Uh, today, we just got some people, the, the, the steps, the first steps into staying healthy and getting healthy and working out. We have nutritionists on site, too. So, if they want to continue to eat healthy after tonight's today's events, they can do that. They can uh, continue to monologue and and it's about the different types of workouts they have and uh, how, to it's, continue. how to continue, right? Keep it going. And uh, My Rock was started because my father had diabetes, so my sister started the foundation. We My Rock because our dad was our rock. So uh, it's just, and it it's just a, life, absolutely, and okay. it's just to educate people and let them know about you know diabetes is not a death sentence. So you can live with it, if you eat right, and you work out. You can, it's not not the world. awareness of diabetes and basically be proactive and getting people to actually work out and to you know get nutritional tips. We're happy everybody came out. We had a lot of trainers come out, donate their time, their expertise, a lot of nutritionists. So we're just happy that we can make a difference. And you know, it's the beginning of the year. Everybody got those new goals for the year. You want to work out, eat right. So that's what this is all about. We're here talking to Layla from Proyo Yogurt. Can you tell us a little bit about the yogurt? Sure. So Proyo is a high protein frozen yogurt. It has 20 grams of protein, 3 grams of fiber, 5 probiotics. It's soy free, it's gluten free, and it's non GMO, low in calories. It's 2 grams of fat, short of meat, complete meal replacement. We have four flavors available. We have a vanilla bean, a banana vanilla, a Dutch chocolate, and a blueberry pomegranate. So if you want something for your pre workout or post workout, it's perfect for that. It's good as a smoothie base. We like to make smoothies, and it's good for an on the go if you have. Um, Something for breakfast, you know, I'm trying to make something. Okay, to find out more about your foundation, what is it again in your website? Uh, my, it's TonyRockComedy.com. I have uh, foundation information on there, everything, my tour dates, everything else, but the foundation is on there as well. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Go to TonyRockComedy.com and follow us on Beauty and the Beat Radio. Thank you. Oh, that's crazy. You was there. I was there. <laughs> See, I support the foundation. Appreciate the my it. Rock foundation. We're going to do it again in January. I think, actually, in 2016, we're going to do it uh, th every quarter. We're going to do January. Okay. Uh, April, what, January, every, April. Four times a year. Yeah, yeah. Four times we'll do it every quarter. Four okay. times a year, yes. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So what's coming up next for Tony Rock? I mean, you always, it seems like you stay busy from the East Coast to the West Coast. I don't even think you live here permanently. You live I'm back and forth, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do you have coming up? Uh, when is is this live? Are we airing right now? Yeah, are we people are. people listening? Yeah. Okay, so this <laughs> this Friday night, I am in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan oh, for Kevin with Hart. Uh, Kevin Hart, D-Ray, uh, Keith Robinson and myself is for Heartbeat uh, 
Labor, Labor Day weekend. Okay, yeah. That's Friday. Saturday, I'm in Houston, Texas at the Arena Theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the Labor Day Comedy Fest, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Monday, no, no. It's, it's Sunday, I'm in Houston. Tuesday, I'm in New York City. I'm at the comic strip Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. And then Friday, I'm on a plane to Ireland. Yes, that Ireland, that actual place. I uh, got a new TV show. We, they shoot it in Ireland. And I'll be there for like nine days filming that show. What are you shooting in Ireland? It's a game show. Oh, okay. And uh, it's, it's real, real, real uh, elaborate. And, mm-hmm. you know, you got to jump from one car to the next car type thing. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, we shooting it. I don't know why, but we're shooting it in Ireland. So That's there. very Never interesting. I I, I'm looking forward to going. Uh, my only concern wedding. is what I'm going to eat. Yeah. I'm sure I could find. I'm sure I'm gonna find a girl there that's like you know, moderately attractive. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I'll find a radio station that loves hip hop because it's all white people there. They love okay. black music. Right, right, right. I'm sure I'll find somewhere to drink and party. And what am I gonna eat? You'll find plenty to drink in Ireland. Yeah, Hell I just yes. wanna know what I'm gonna eat. Ooh, good what luck, do they bro. eat in Ireland? What's like a specialty? Exactly. Works, works burger, works. What do you call those? Uh, works. Uh, Something, something. What are you thinking? So, are you thinking about like Guinness uh, jerk chicken? I don't know. No, 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 no jerk no. chicken. <laughs> I'm thinking of Ireland. Ireland is I a culture. No what's, what'd you say? What's burgers? What's burgers? Oh, the, the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, bro, yeah. No. You think what's the book? What's the movie? Uh, um, you thinking know. Harry Potter? You thinking uh, Harry I don't Potter? know. Maybe. It's what's burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. But hey, um, hey, you know what's funny? Uh, speaking of what? this guy always being busy, I remember I was in Atlanta and he was cracking jokes. <laughs> I'm in Atlanta visiting my you know, family down south and it's, I came you know, came from uh, being out and about about 3, 4 in the morning. Turn the TV, what do I see this dude on TV with his new TV show on Bounce TV? Yeah, That's yeah. Yo, I, it's called, uh, it's called uh, uh, Man and Wife. Yeah, Man M-A-N-N and Wife. And wife. Uh, David and Tamala Man. Mm-hmm. The, they play a married couple. They play like a Brady Bunch couple. Like she's divorced with two children, he's divorced with two children. They get together married. And uh, it's, you know, blending of families, and I play his partner. I'm, he's a detective. I play his partner. But uh, I think we're gonna start shooting new episodes of that in January as well. Oh. Yeah, we shot 20 episodes in a month. That was that was a lot of fun, man. On Long Beach, right? Yeah, out in Long Beach. Beach. Yeah, it was, no, that was it's a real on good Bounce episode. TV. Oh, that was I actually seen. Uh, oh. That was how I saw. He had the ch- <laughs> he had this bad female, right? Mm-hmm. And she was kind of a a sneak behind his back. Oh Still yeah, all yeah, kind yeah, of stuff yeah. and whatnot. Wait, was that a and and uh, was that the one with Layla? Was that with Layla? I think so. Yeah, Layla. You know Layla. O- Layla Odom. Yeah, Layla Odom. She's a comedian. She played. She's an actress. Okay. She's an actress. She played uh, my my love interest on uh, on the show, mm. and it was life imitating art. Mm. Art imitating life. Why? Because she's your love interest. In real life? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Oh. My life is dope, and he does <laughs> dope shit. Wow. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, would you ever consider? We were talking about reality TV mm. and our hot topics earlier about you know just like we talked Stevie J and Jocelyn about them and the love and hip hop, and they now have the Meet the Jordans or Stevie J. Oh, would is that ever, what it is? They it's something like yeah, I think Meet the Jordans. It's, it's Meet, Meet the, the Jordans, Jordans or either Jordans. Stevie J and Jocelyn. Whatever it is, it's an introduction into his life. Right. And his kids, like it's all about the Jordans, you know, because okay, he has like what five or six kids, yeah, at least minimum. Wow, yeah, I didn't know the bulldog game was weak, too. <laughs> hmm. What well, was your you question? Would I consider a reality TV yeah, show? Would you- I would. I actually, uh, about five years ago, I was approached about doing a reality show, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We had a camera crew follow us around mm-hmm. my, myself, my sister, my business partner, Dwight Elmore. Mm-hmm. We had a camera crew following us a around face. for about two weeks, right. They got a lot of footage that they didn't think they was going to get. Right. Because we was like, after a while, it was just like, okay, the camera just happened to be here. We was talking like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, it was intense stuff. So mm-hmm. we started editing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had a show. It was like, we it was like we definitely got something here. So then uh, some things started happening in White's life. Some things started happening in Quan's life. And we kind of like put the pause on it. You didn't want to show all that. And now, looking back on it, so much stuff has transpired it would have been so amazing if we kept the cameras rolling oh. my sister has ha, since had a baby right uh dwight has since got married had two children going through whatever stuff he's going through uh-huh. uh i've been touring random girlfriends here and there it's like so much stuff we had that it would have been the super super reality show to see and i i, I, I definitely think about, about doing another one life. why wouldn't you give us a lot of that Give you what? Just what's going on in your personal life. In my I personal feel, life? Yeah, I feel like I'm you an know, open book. It's like whatever people want to know. I have nothing to hide. Oh, who are you dating? 
I am uh... a... <laughs> Today, today's Wednesday. Yeah, today's Wednesday. <laughs> I'm, date, I'm dating someone, but right now we... It's, it's at the point now where I think that she's starting to realize, like, my lifestyle might not be something that she's willing to be a part of. So much, so much travel. So much traveling. Uh, you know, the groupies, the, the parties. It's like she might think she's getting a little, like... Hold up. I don't know if I signed up for all of this. Well, so, you don't do anything to comfort her or her boss? What can I do? My job is my job. But I mean, she Stand has to come first. I mean, she can come with you. I mean, you know, it's, it's No, she has, I want. I don't want a girl that, that can come with me all the time. If you can come with me everywhere, then you have nothing going on in your life. <laughs> Ah. If you go always jump on a plane when right. I went, when I jump on right. a plane, it's That's like shorty, what what do you do during the day? Right, right, right. I got you. you know I, mean? so I want to I want to check this independent has her own makes her own. Right. I want two bosses to get together and form a corporation. That's exactly. I don't want That's to be good. the boss and I just hired another employee. Oh okay, I get you that. Know, I have enough employees already. Mm. Are you looking forward to having kids? I am. Yes, okay. yes. That's the only thing. I, like I've done everything else. It's like I've been around the world. I've just do, done tours, done movies, TV shows, party with the best of them. Uh, you know, ate some of the best food, drank some of the best whatever, you know, went to the best vacation spots. Now I just want to have a kid and look at him and be like, yo, I made that little motherfucker. Like, <laughs> been to like that, strip club. that little nigga is, is oh, came yeah. from me. <laughs> like, I just want to do that. Like, yo, that's right. crazy, man. All right. I, I want to go to school and be like, yo, how's he doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, she doing, you know. Right, right. I get that. I think that that's next for you. I think so. I, I hear you talk. I've, I've seen your com um, comedy skits, and you talk about it. And I'm like, okay, you have kids? Because I've heard you say a few things. But you always like talk about... Um, uh, what was it? Let's show the video. Oh, we got a video? <laughs> nah, go ahead. What? No. <laughs> no, I think it was something you did for Arsenio where you were talking about um, your... Maybe it had something about but not pulling out or something. I can't remember everything. <laughs> now you want me to not, I not feel... Nah, that's all good. That's all right. Nah, but I, my niece is like, yeah, I, my niece is on my phone. Like, she's yeah. like my screensaver. Baby mad. So she's, she's the greatest. Right, 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 right. So right. she's like, I exactly. have her all the time. And those eyes. She's at the house right now. She's like, actually at my house right now. Oh, she was at the event? Yeah, yeah. She's at everything. I wanted Kwan to bring her last night to the show, to the uh, show with the, at the Nokia. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, she might be, you know, she might not sit still or whatever. I'm like, once I get off, it's all good. Mm -hmm. You know, but Kwan didn't want to bring her. Mm. Kwan wanted to party, so. Kwan wanted to party. She, <laughs> she, she thinking about bringing her up? party. What's up, Flint? Yo, shout out to uh, Dana Dane, man. Yesterday Yo, was Dana 50. Dane's birthday, his 50th birthday. I hosted his party last night at Ibano's. Uh -huh. It was sick, man. man. Uh, Crooked Eye was there. Slick Rick the Ruler was there. Slick Rick was there. Uh, uh, Dana yeah. Dane performed. Wow. Uh, a, a bunch of comics, man. It was it was super dope, yo. What's up, so Patty? he was celebrating his birthday and having like 30 years in the industry. Did yeah, you guys yeah. do a little concert or something? Yeah, he got on, I, like, I, I just wanted to give a shout out, so I got on stage. Oh, DJ Scratch was DJing too. Wow. From EPMD, DJ EQ got, got busy. Mm -hmm. Shout out to EQ. Uh, and then I brought Dana on just to say some words. And I was, once he got on stage, I'm like, yo, you know you got to do something, right? And he did something. Then Scarface comes in. He the gets rapper? on and does Scarface. the, the first. Yes, does the first part of uh, my mind playing tricks on me. No way. What? No, it was insane. It was insane, what? man. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, that was dope. It was, it was super dope, yo. Damn, that's classic right there, man. People on stage. It was man. ill to see, like, yeah, because when, when he got on with Dana Dane, it's like it was ill to be on stage and see all everybody's phone just lit up, light like, up. just lights mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. It's like, man, this is crazy. It's so much social media now. Like, everybody yes. wants, like, let me capture this moment. Right. Get this periscope and get this tweet. I think that takes people away from enjoying the moment, though, sometimes. I, I mean, so look, I mean, like, I mean, look at nightlife. When people get on stage and you're like, oh, yo, it's like, yo, why don't you just enjoy it for yourself? Right, because like, what you, you going to do with that two seconds? Dave Chappelle said that one time on stage. Dave, and I, I'm going to get to that, too. Yeah. Dave Chappelle said on stage one time, he got on stage at the Laugh Factory, and everybody's phone came out. And he said, hey, how about, we, how about we do this? How about you put your phones away and let's just have a human experience? <laughs> let's just be people in a room watching the show. And then you tell your friends about it later, and if they didn't, they weren't here, they missed it. Right. That's how it used to be. Right. You know what I mean? And like you was about to say, I think you was about to say, you go in a club now, and it's like, it'll be four chicks in a booth, music blasting, everybody partying, having a great time, and then all the chicks will be dressed up just sitting there like this. Like that. Talking about we turned up. And they, they, they here with their girls. We turned. It's we more turned. about letting people know you there than actually being there now. Right. And I I don't do that. I go in a, I go in a club, it's like phone off. I'm about to turn it to 10. Get drunk, dance, Smarter. I'm leaving sweaty. It's like I'm having a good time. Yo, I gotta say, this dude parties though. 
Yeah. I mean, they say I party. This dude gets it in in terms of having yeah, a good man. time. That's what I mean by party. People don't understand. People be like, oh, you always out party. I'm having a good time. My mm-hmm. friends having a good time. I'm having a good time. We enjoying some good music. Yeah. That's how it's supposed we to be. We get the work done first, though. So if yeah. you see me out turning up, it's like something good happened that day exactly. or that week. And I'm like, now we get to reap the rewards of the hard work we put in. Right. Okay. So what um, what is next for you? This Oh, we said this week is... um. You're Vegas, doing. Houston, New York, then Ireland. Yes. Houston, Vegas. I might. Have to, ooh. Um, hmm. Yeah. If you're in Vegas, if you if you're in Vegas uh, this weekend, hit me up, yo. Yeah, oh, I might have to. Uh, uh, yeah, perfect. ladies, if you're in Heart Vegas this weekend, weekend, it's Labor Heart Day weekend. weekend. You got the. the we got the Rock Cosmo, Rock yo. Himself, Tony Rock will be in Vegas. K West might be on the uh, most interesting man of LA Vegas edition. <laughs> Hey, we see. We see. Sharice, we might have to go Bring to Vegas cameras. this weekend. Do, What's up, do it on location. Yeah, we can Vegas. do that. Do it on location. Ready? Vegas this weekend? Yeah. You ain't ready. You might. T- you ain't ready to turn up. You have a bathing yeah. suit? Yeah. Shh. Boom, that's all you need. Okay. I don't know. Sharice ain't never parted with K-West. I don't know. What you mean? I don't know. She might not be about that life. <laughs> oh, I want to know. You about that life? Yeah, I just went to a pool party this weekend. Oh, oh, oh really? Oh, did you have on their bathing suit? I or did. did you or want did you get in the I water? Did. I have, yes. You I got in the water at, at, oh, she about to pull at up pool pictures. party? Mm-hmm. You about to pull out pictures? Ooh, mm-hmm. get the camera ready. Exclusive. Let me see. <laughs> I can't Speaking of which, shout out to my swim. man Dwight, you Jason. Swim. What's up? You y'all? swim with no gut. You probably look good in the bathing suit. No gut. Like they <laughs> wait, wait, what? Rico. The some they said the winter gut into the summer butt. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do. No, they have some. <laughs> it's fabulous. The fabulous. Song. That's yeah. fabulous. You know what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, though. No, I know I how winter like, gut turn into a summer butt. Right. Yeah. 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 Because you know, because really, the really good butt injections, they really can only do it off of fat or something off of your body. Otherwise, mm, it's like a little. Like, I have imp- no idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I thought about or you, it. Or you, or you know. But what? I figured I could just like try to work out. Or, or hey, hey, I was gonna say or. Or. You could get butt injections, or oh, you could just work out. God. You could just work out, like you could walk just a go little to the bit. gym and go to people and work out and. Walk a little bit, do yeah. a little That's squat it. or a there leg you lift. You there know you what go. I mean? The booty, it does what rise up still. You know what I mean? You know? Right? Mine does. I, I tried it. It hasn't started sagging yet. So I figured, you know, if I'm trying to... <laughs> <laughs> you said like you're an old lady. Like, I ain't started sagging yet. It hasn't. Like, I mean, you know, I can't figure out the picture. That's all right. Y'all don't really want to see it. But sure. I did have fun. I was at the Roosevelt. You know how they... Look <laughs> You was at the Rosie. We was, and then we were like, yeah, they had... Now you're trying to find the perfect picture? Is that what you're doing? No, I'm trying to find the picture that oh. I took. What, you looking for it? You, you waiting for it? I want to see. Okay, let's see. We. Sorry. Okay, that's fun. So, how has it been, how has it helped you having, like, you said everybody in your family is funny, but yeah. we know your brother is Chris Rock. Has that yes. helped you? And like establishing yourself because I see everything you've pretty much done has been off of your really comedic genius yourself or just right. really getting out there and doing right. the work. But right. how has that helped you in the sense of being having a famous part? Because you and Guy Tori kind of spoke about the, I mean, yeah. Um, what did I say right? Yeah. Okay, about having like family that is also yes. in the same business. So it's how a, does that it's help a, you? It's a double edged sword. Mm-hmm. It helps and it hurts. It's like, uh, some damn, yo. <laughs> That's your ass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even she was it. What was I talking about? What the, <laughs> you said something about uh, I don't know, bro. I want to know what y'all watching. <laughs> Chilling. I know. Like, that's Shit. my friend said. Well, who took the, the water? Pick? Even looked good. <laughs> hey, hey, put this camera on. Put the camera. Y'all want to see this? Y'all want to see this? Mm. Y'all want to see this? Put the camera on. Y'all want to see this? I want to know. Mm-mm, can't really that's see. Okay. Yeah, I would say it's a double-edged sword. It helps and it hurts. It's uh, God, it's man. like sometimes because of who my brother is, his status, people think, uh, you know, and of course he's big brother, so he does everything first. Mm-hmm. He's been doing stand-up way longer than me. Right. But since of where he is in his career, his status, people think, oh, is this his brother? He should be just as far advanced as he is. But right. it's like, that's not the reality of it. It's like, I got to pay my dues, too. I got to right. put my work in and just as much as he had to to get to that spot. Okay. I met Tone about, whew, about six, six years ago, mm-hmm. I want to say, Chocolate. I mean, I would see him all the time, but I met him yeah, yeah. Sundays when he was hosting there, and uh, I'm good friends with a lot of the staff there. What's up, Caduce, Ben, Chris. Caduce, uh, what up, uh, boy? Uh, I ain't seen Caduce in a minute. Uh, Ron G, all those people over there, sidekick. And, uh, you know, I was had, there last night, yo. He was there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Can't do late. Everybody was there. But uh, I, t- I came up to Tone and I said, Tone, I just want to let you know, man, 
you know, I give you mad props and I call you the grand champ because a lot of people maybe say, well, you in the shadow of your brother or this and this and this and that. And I say, I don't look at you like that, man. Mm -hmm. I see you always doing your own thing. You don't you seem like you don't even call, I mean, you call your brother for any type of right. X, Y, and Z. And, and I applaud you for that, man. And keep doing your thing, Nothing. man. And, no, I'm just kidding. No, for real. It was, it, was, it was real. It was a straight, real conversation. And, you know, he didn't know me. I, I knew of him, and he worked a bunch of my people. So right. we've been, you know, hella boys since then. And I got to yeah. say, man, you still yeah. doing your thing, man. But you know what? It's like people always say that, uh, that use that fr that term or that phrase in the shadow of something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I take as a compliment. Right. You have to st let's let's be realistic. Get that. You right. have to stand close to something to be in the shadow of it. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. Sean Wayans is not in the shadow of Damian Wayans because he's so far from Damian Wayans right. mm -hmm. that there is no shadow. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Tony's right here. Right. That's right. why he's in the shadow. Right. right. So it's like, yeah, Charlie Murphy's so far from Eddie Murphy, <laughs> there is no shadow. Right. Charlie Murphy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Eddie's so far, Charlie's in the Eddie desert. Eddie Murphy just joined the cast of something. What was it? He did? Eddie Murphy did not join the cast of anything. I did. I just read it on something. I wish I would have known what get I was it on, about. P Pull it up right now. Uh -oh. Eddie going to be on TV. I got to know. I got to know. <laughs> I gotta know. He, Please, Eddie bro, Murphy, was, you sure Eddie Murphy? He just joined the cast of something. I was like, wow. Okay. Nah, nah, son. Oh you tell gosh. me Eddie Murphy on Dancing with Stars. I'm something fucking like running that, through the wall. That. I'm gonna run through this wall. What? Oh my gosh, can you find something? Oh lord. But I mean, like, Last Comic Standing has one of the Wayans brothers as one of the hosts. Or Keenan, you, yeah, Keenan, yeah. Do you ever watch that? Like, what do you think of shows like that? I, I my, myself, I don't like comedy competitions. I don't oh. like to judge my peers. Mm -hmm. I would never want to tell a comic like, "Yo, your set was good," but you need to do. It's like and, and comedy's in your own voice. So. The Richard Pryor bi biopic. Bi oh, the movie. Okay, see, I oh, mean, the, it was something. I don't oh, know. Okay, I was just yeah. reading a little blurb on Devil. Who's he gonna play? Himself, I hope. <laughs> you stupid. Really? Shit. I, I want to know. What's up, Mike Epps? I want to play Paul Mooney. Yo, oh, he's so funny. I want to play Paul Yo, Mooney. Paul Mooney. If Mike is, is if Mike is funny. Richard Pryor, I want to play Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney is funny. Granted, we both got the same birthday. Richard Pryor's father. Okay, okay. so he's going to do like a quick little okay. eat in and out. Okay. Yo, All right, dope, know. dope, See? dope. Shout out to oh. shout out to shout out to Eddie shout Murphy. out to uh to the to the goat man. See? Do you consider Eddie the goat? No, he's not. But he's he. Won. I couldn't think of like I, the I, king. I, right. He's not even the king. But shout out to Eddie, yo. Richard Pryor's the goat. Richard Pryor's the king. Richard Pryor's the goat. Man. There's only one king. It's Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor's so that. when you're when you're practicing, do you practice? When you're, what like, do you mean practice? Like, do you practice for a show? Like I hold a hairbrush in the mirror. Yeah. Type practice? I mean, no. not that, no. but when I'm on the road, see, when I'm on the road, like, like do you read? Like, do you write them out? Do you write your jokes out? Yeah, I have several different processes. Some stuff I I think of it, and I think it's funny, and it's just in my head. Like I know mm -hmm. that I say it like that. Mm -hmm. Some stuff I write. I write like the topic, like mm -hmm. I'll write women, mm -hmm. and then I put all my bullet points. Like I want to make okay. sure I get this point in, make sure I get this point in, make mm -hmm. sure I get this point in. Mm -hmm. And then however I get to the points, I just get there organically. Right, right. Because I don't want to sound like I'm scripted, like right. I'm a robot. Like, right. And then women like to be, that's when it's whack. Right. And it's organic, like yo, let me tell you something, man. Women are fucking, you know, like, and you got to find it. Mm -hmm. That's when it's organic. Uh, so I do it what, that like way. find that spot? You got to find that, that, that rhythm to tell the joke. And that you, sounds like sex a little bit. It is. It's, it's kind of like sex. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's definitely. It's like kind of. It's, it's a lot like sex. Yeah, because I was kind of like. It's all performance based. That, right. that, that's true. Right. You, if you killing, you know you killing. <laughs> yeah, right. If you whack, you know you whack. Right. Right. That's, that right. Right. Hmm. I, okay. I don't know about that whack wife. I don't know about that whack wife either. Call, I ain't got but, that. I mean, no, no, no. I lost my point. That's I was all right. trying to make a point. You think about the comedy show tonight because we about to have a good time. That's no, why. No, I was thinking about the point, the, the point that... How to write the material? The practice was the question. Practice? Yeah, so what I do, like, to answer that question, when I go on the road, like let's say I'm in Ohio this weekend, I got four or five shows. Right. Every show I'll have a block of stuff that I'm like, okay, I want to make sure I get this block in. Just you know to see what I was how, thinking to, in to my test head? It, to yeah, to test it, it out or whatever. So, okay, this is what I was thinking. Like, sometimes with musicians, like, I'll talk to different musicians and they say, I don't listen to other musicians because it blocks, it messes up what my comedy is going right. to be like or whatever. But I think with comedians, if you like other comedians, you really support them and it's like kind of like they support each other. It's like, right. like guys. some of them. Really? Some of them, yes. Oh, yeah. A lot of hate. A lot of hate. A lot of hate. Is, it? is this a comedy beef? Oh, no, it's no, it's no beef. First of all, it's like. Hate. Comedy hate? It's, it's a lot of comedy hate, yeah. Oh, really? It's a lot of comedy hate. Oh, so it's not all supportive? Not all supportive. Not like love, no, love. No, not love, love at all. Oh. No. 
Just yeah. imagine, just imagine being the younger brother of who's arguably one of the best comics of our day. So they be hating on you? Of course. What? Of course. Really? You don't hate on Tony like that? Insane, insane amount of hate in stand-up comedy, especially black comedy. Yeah. What are we doing? Uh, it's just, you know, somebody don't want you on the show because they feel like you're going to, you know, blow them out the water. Somebody wants you to, uh, don't want to mess with you because you got some part that they wanted or whatever. You know, it's like. Dumb stuff. Yeah, dumb stuff, yeah. Patty. I don't, I, I don't, I don't waste the energy on it, so. Patty. You know. Right. Wasted energy is worse than like wasted time, wasted money. You can't get that shit back. Right, 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 right. Okay. Well, I thought that everyone like I think that the point I was trying to make is like they, they support each other, but sometimes mm -hmm. you say you don't listen mm -hmm. to other people or you know like musicians. Like, like I don't listen to other. Artists. No, I listen to everybody. I listen to every comic. I know every comic. I know at least one or two of their jokes mm -hmm. because uh, you just have to study everybody. You know, right. some people I don't care to hear. I know right. when they walk on stage, I'm like I don't want to hear nothing. This right. Because I've heard it before and I know it's you know mm. whack. Mm. But uh, I listen. I, I I give everybody a little bit of attention because mm. I want to see what. I want to keep my finger on the pulse, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? See what's going on, see what everybody's doing. It's like being a musician, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're a rapper, you're like, let me see what what's the hot shit everybody's doing now. But that's what rappers are so hard, and I was like, sometimes they're like, I don't listen to other rappers. Yeah. But that's probably, what I was trying to... Those are probably not the good rappers. Oh, they're not? No, Ryan, you listen to other rappers? Uh, not the new ones, You gotta be... I was told, I was told by uh, a great comic mm -hmm. named Richard Jenny, mm -hmm. may he rest in peace, that you have to listen to other comics to be inspired by them but not influenced by them right okay that's a good way so to you it. watch him you watch i watch richard Pryor. i'm not watching him like i'm gonna take that joke i'm gonna take that joke i'm gonna do that joke it's like yo this is amazing at how great he is on stage how flawless this all seems how right. organic he is how he gives inanimate objects a voice like he'll be like i picked my phone up my phone was like motherfucker put me down it's like, <laughs> that, like you know what i'm saying he can make anything talk to you you right. know what i'm saying and right. you watch it to be inspired right. not to be influenced you know what i'm saying i saw something where he um was like they just showed a throwback of his uh, and everything he said was just funny like it was that's nothing, why he, this is why nothing, he really best. didn't bomb like i was like i know something. this was a setup but i was just like this is not, why everything he said you just wanted to laugh i was like he's stupid. this is why richard Pryor is the greatest of all time to me to me, I saw a live on the Sunset Strip uh, when I was ten years old. Uh, mm -hmm. It was the funniest Is that thing. That's what you talked about getting like blown. Into yeah, it was. Yeah. Like, it was the funny. funniest thing I ever saw at 10, 12 years old. Whatever, mm -hmm. however old I was. I saw it ten years later. It was the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. Mm -hmm. I saw it ten years after that. It was the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. Mm -hmm. I saw Eddie Murphy, delirious, when I was fifteen years old. Yeah, it was the funniest shit I ever saw in my life. I saw it again at 21 and I said, it's, pretty, it's kind of funny. It's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw it at 30 and I said, this is juvenile. Right. It was funny in the moment. Right. right. But at 30, I'm like, okay, ice cream truck is coming. I get it. It's funny. Okay. It's, right. You know, uh, you ever take a doo doo and it's like, okay, it was a 16 year old, right. you'd be on the floor. Right. But Richard Pryor, boom, 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 right. boom. Still. 10 years from now, I'll watch it and be like, yes, nigga, it's the funniest right. thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just the it's gonna stand the test of time. It's, okay. it's gonna be it's it's timeless, man. Mm -hmm. I think my brothers uh uh bring the pain, mm -hmm. timeless. Yeah, I think Dave was. Chappelle uh, killing him softly, yeah. timeless. Mm -hmm. I think Patrice O'Neal elephant in the room, timeless. It's like they, I those why those guys. Are, yeah, I'm about to look at that one. You did. Check that okay, out. So what? Gonna... At Patrice O'Neal, I got. Oh my god. That out. I know, I think so, the dark skin guy. I think I remember, like, kind of, sort of. <laughs> Yo, you gotta, oh my God. Okay. He says, uh, when you hear the part about the titty meat, you're just gonna be on the floor. That's all. Titty meat? Oh. Titty meat. Oh, I'm about to that's watch it on the way meat. to, that's, well, that's I'm about that. to watch it on the way to ADD tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the titty meat. Oh, you know what? He passed away from, like, diabetes yes, or something. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's another thing you're standing for, yeah, the diabetes the awareness. That was the big homie right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, talk about Rock the World Week, man. Rock, Rock the World Week. I think we just had, what, ninth annual? Tenth. Tenth, tenth annual? Ten years. Mm -hmm. Rock the World Weekend is my birthday weekend, which I'm so happy that it coincides with the, with the weekend of the BET Awards. Uh, that's 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 just look at God. Like God made the BT boys the same weekend as my birthday, which is a beautiful thing because everybody's in LA that weekend. Right. right. And we have four or five days of parties. We had a beach this year. We had a beach party. We had a dinner. We had a club party. We had uh, what else we did? We did a, did the comedy show. Of course, comedy, uh, and all that. Yeah. So it's just four or five days of parties. We did ten years. Now I said I was gonna do ten years, and then we'll take it on the road. So next year we might not do it in LA. We might do it because in Miami or Atlanta. Or the BET like Awards hasn't been 10 years, has it? No, birthday weekend. My birthday okay. weekend has been 10 years. I don't know what BET Award they on. It's my 6th. 
Yeah. So, so we're like your that. Team. That, No, it got to be one of them. EBT? EBT Awards? EBT? EBT? I mean, uh... It got to be more really? than that. Really? Huh? BT Awards is, uh, I think, seven? No, got to be... Chris Tucker hosted one year. My brother hosted one year. Will and Man. Jada hosted one year. Oh, Anthony no. Anderson hosted one year. Uh, That's uh, right. Uh, Damon Wayans hosted one year. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson hosted one year. That's six right there. there. That's six right there. I think I'm going to that that's you know so, yeah it's this boy uh, yeah okay there it is Who we know BT we can get on the phone Jesse Collins we need to get somebody so we can get BT on the back <laughs> that little punk thing they did was kind of funny though they brought punk back yeah they brought they, it they, back you see how they did it they said you know BT uncut and then you turn into BT uncut and they said we got you oh word that's how yeah, it starts that's how they did it it was punk. Oh, wow, that's funny. It was that's funny. BT did something funny. funny? Get out of here. Yeah, they had Waka funny. Flocka. Who else was on there? I haven't actually. I, I, heard, actually they punk, I heard they punk came Michelle on came her way Michelle. to All Death. Shout out to Miss Diddy. She was on her way to All Death when they punked, yeah. I heard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Chris Maybe. Brown got punk. I got to start watching it. Yeah. yeah. They going to punk you next. Nah, so nah, you're nah, not going to nah, even nah. know. I'm going to fuck around and hit somebody. Yo. Ah, that's, what they, yeah. that's what they always say. That's what they always say. I was playing, yo. I'm like, oh, nigga, don't do that. You wouldn't want to be punked? I mean, it'd be fun if it was something, you know. Right, but you think you would, like, I think I might react. Like, it gotta be, the only way you're gonna keep me calm is if the cops come. If the cops are involved, and I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> hold up, I, 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 I can't take a chance. Remember when Vivica was on Punks about oh. Tashina? Who was having a baby? Somebody. Tashina was having a baby. Did you see that one? That was, she got so hood on them, like, they couldn't even, like, play with her no more. They had Vivica to- got hood? Yes. Yes, Vivica is hood. I've, I've worked with Vivica in Atlanta. She... Vivica got so she was like, "Look, let me tell you something." Like it, it got to the point where they had to like let her know, like, um, yeah, we just gotta let you know what's going on. Right yeah, now. they had to like stop, stop the joke. The joke had to stop. Yeah. So that's where you. I think it's something like that will probably happen with me. If I was with my boys too, it'd be yeah. like, "Yo, son, hold like up. something's going on." Yeah. Something, oh, like something the time like... we was on TMC. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we was on. T- <laughs> I like them. <laughs> Uh, Say again? 2001. BT was started in 2001. Okay, so 14 years. 14 years. Wow. Damn. Really? Yeah. All right. If I just start paying attention over the last what 10 years? Come on, we've been paying attention. I mean, EBT. Nah, you know what? Because it's just you don't count them. It's just like every year, you, just, you just know it's coming. Right. It's like Grammys. You don't know how many Grammys. It's like I just know every year. It's like January 70 Grammys is here. Or something. I don't know. Like they're they there. They're like grandma age. For real. Mm-hmm. Hey, yo, whatever happened to a 40 Rock? What? 40 Rock. Oh, 40 Rock was a uh, was was that was for, that was for all Def Digital. R- Russell's new imprint, by the way, is all Def Digital. Right. It's not Def Jam no more. It's all Def Digital. And we did a uh, like a it was like a, <laughs> a behind the scenes of the all Def comedy show we do on Wednesdays. We did like our own little sitcom, oh, and uh, it was just a time thing because Russell was so busy and I was on the road, so it was like we had to shoot whenever either one of us was free right. and it was just so time consuming like I had to fly back sometimes that, right. for a day just to shoot and fly back out on the road so if we have time if people can just like you know clear their calendars we could probably make some more episodes they were pretty funny that was fun they were pretty funny yeah. I had a chance Lisa to be on Lisa Ray is a good friend of the show what was it like filming all of us? Mm. Uh, it, it was fun sometimes huh? it was fun sometimes sometimes? Yeah. I I, no I had a ball every day it was the greatest job I've ever had you know to be on TV and New to LA and making all this so money great. and meeting people, but every yeah, yeah, but everybody wasn't happy to be there. Everybody was not happy to be there. Why Lisa Ray, I don't know why. Okay. I don't know why. People uh-huh. had people were, were, were established, well more established <laughs> right. than I was. I was just so happy to be you know, on TV. I was like, I'm not fucking this money up. Right. But everybody else seemed to be a little more established and didn't oh, want the money. Yeah, yeah. That's why people meet me and they like, some people like, I didn't even know you did stand up because they saw me on TV first. first yes, right. I've been doing stand up for damn near 20 years. Right. I know it was fun coming on set looking at Lisa Ray. Oh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Oh, boy. I didn't know you were Chris Rock's brother until I found the information. I was just like, Tony Boy. <laughs> Dave Chappelle told me that. Dave Chappelle said, I didn't know you was Chris's brother. I thought it was just a horrible coincidence <laughs> that y'all both had the same last name. That's crazy. Yeah, that's in fact, speaking of uh, Chappelle, I was watching a little something on, you know, social media yesterday, in fact, how Cat Williams, right. what's up, Cat? He had made reference to look what's going on with Chappelle's life since, okay. what, the 50 million or yeah. the 500 million? Yeah. And he hasn't had been offered any type of TV show, anything since then. Now, granted, he had the dang Radio Sydney Music Hall recently, but, right. you know, that whole conspiracy theory. He's touring right now, though. He's in, uh, I think he's in he's in uh, Denver next week. Only I only know that because one of my boys in Denver asked me if I was coming out. Gotcha, gotcha. But he's touring. But just looking at that whole dynamics, man, do you really think... 
just thinking in terms of if he really challenged the status quo, he really, you know, we always talk about racism, right. left and right, and he really challenged the system. Do you really think that really backfired on him because of that? Mm. I think he hasn't been offered another show because people are probably afraid of him at this point. It's like that was such a out of left field move to leave the show, the, a, a hit show, the that now they're like, well, what's to say? If we offer him X amount of dollars, he's going to want to do it. You know what I mean? Then Dave's never been the guy from what I've seen in his career that he's never been the guy to just do something to do it. You know what I mean? Like he'll lay low years and then pop back up when he wants to. I feel like Chris Tucker did that. I don't know if it was by Chris choice Tuck, or no, by choice. No, I don't Chris, know if it was Chris by Tucker, choice or by the industry, but I mean, I feel like he did that. Chris Tucker was different. Chris Tucker, Chris Tucker made a lot of money <laughs> and stopped nurturing the thing that got him there, right. which was which is stand up. Stand up, right. right? You can't stand up's like a chick. Like if you don't pay attention, it's like even it's even so more than a chick. Away. It's like if you don't pay attention to this chick, she gone, right? And you can't get her back, right? And we've seen comics stop doing stand up because they've been making so much money, then try to get back to it, and it's never the same, right? Because you didn't nurture the thing that got you there. Right. My brother has never stopped doing stand-up. Right. Dave Chappelle yeah. disappeared, but he pops up. He still does stand-up. Right. He'll, he'll, go on, he'll go to some city in the Midwest and just pop him in a comedy club and do a week there, mm -hmm. and nobody will know about it. Because right. he knows you have to nurture it. It's like you got you to gotta work this muscle at all times. Right. Mike Epps. You know what I mean? Mike Epps always like torn. Always. always on the road. Like, you yeah, know what I, mean? I, like, I like that little... I like the show on Stars. Yeah, but Chris, he just got the money and said, fuck it. Like, okay. And now it's just like... I had to stand up in Atlanta recently. I watched it actually yesterday. That's, but that's pretty, 20 years later. He's kind of stopped for a long, long, long time. Yeah. It's on Netflix. Yeah. yeah Pissed off, man. I saw it. I saw it. That was you like fun. him? I like Chris Tucker. Uh, yeah, I didn't like the special. Oh, okay. I didn't like the special. <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he was better than that. Right. I thought he, he I probably thought, was a little rough on it. Yeah, I thought he, he could have been, like, from what he used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the that's the unfortunate thing about stand up comedy. It's like when you see somebody in their height. Mm -hmm. the, the thing about about the industry, not even stand up comedy. You see somebody at they at their height mm -hmm. in stand up, in music, in sports, in whatever, and then you see them years later, and it's not the same. Mm -hmm. People just can't grasp that. It. They can't get the reality of like, yo, he's not that dude no more. Like right. Kobe, you always want right. You Kobe always, is that dude. You're gonna Hello? always want him to be. Afro Kobe, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Afro Kobe was the coldest motherfucker, like one of the Afro coldest dudes I've ever seen. Afro Kobe was the black But mind. now people just can't get like, like oh Andrew man, Kobe. Kobe's older, like yeah, wow. Yeah, like you know? they don't get that. Like yeah. oh my god, he heard his thing. Well, it's like Jay Z, he not rapping about you know the bricks right. no more, you know. Right. Can and I you live? See, you see Chris never. Tucker, you like he not the he dude not the hat on the... back was like you know Roach is fighting in the living room, you right? Know? And now it's like he, right. oh man, it's just not the same. Right, I remember that. Aww. Okay, so how can we follow you on um, Instagram? Uh, that's how you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a little. You can follow me on Twitter at Tony Rock. You can follow me on Instagram Tony underscore Rock. Mm. You can mm. read about it on Twitter, or you can watch, watch the movie on Instagram. Mm. I don't do Periscope. Uh, I'm not actually. I'm, I don't do Snapchat. I'm actually not doing any more social media. Why? It's a distraction. Is it? It's a distraction. I, I have so much to do and so much to focus on during the day that I can't afford to do any more social media and distract myself from what's really important. Okay. So I, I, I think Periscope is a great idea. Right. I, I love it. Uh, I, I When I see people at the shows and they're doing the Periscope, I'm like, that's really cool. That's a really great concept. Uh -huh. But I just can't afford to put any more time into it. I got movies to write and jokes to write and TV shows to pitch and sell and tours to go on. I, I can't do any more social media. It's a distraction. Okay. When you're really trying to get it, like, I'm pretty sure... Bill Gates is not in the crib right now. Like, yo, I, I gotta tweet that. You know but what I'm saying? He might have a social media team. It, probably, probably. That I could say that yeah. he might do. I think least. Obama has enough stuff to focus right. on during the day, then you know, right. shit like that. And I'm trying to be that busy. That busy. Okay, well, Tony, I think you're that busy, and we'll just look for you on social media and see what we can see. There you go. Okay, well, we're gonna close it out now. K West, you got anything to say? Yo. Once again, thanks to Tone coming through. My yeah. life is dope. Yeah, he does yeah. dope shit. Yeah. Once again, catch us tonight. All Def Digital. <laughs> All Def yeah. Comedy Live, All 8 o'clock. Or 8 o'clock open bar from 8 to 9. Come have a drink in the lounge upstairs. Show starts roughly around when else, whenever Russell Simmons gets there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's between like nine. he every show? He, he tries to when he's in town. Okay. Uh, it's what, between 10, 10 to 20 bitches every time? Nine, between like 9, 9.30 we start, right? And Russell comes in with a, with a harem of chicks every, every Wednesday. What and, is uh, that about? Uh, is Russell Simmons, is that why that's Russell married? Simmons. Watch Cross Groove. He was he was married. I said, is that why? Because he always has a harem. 
Oh, no, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. I might okay. ask him that tonight. Okay, People want to know why you're not married anymore, Russell. Ah, uh -huh, that's a good question. Oh, shout out to Celsius. Yeah, mm -hmm. shout out to Celsius Energy really? Drink, one of the sponsors. Really? Pitbull all day, Shouts though. out to Pitbull Energy Drink. <laughs> <laughs> shout really? out to Pitbull. Okay, oh, hey, like, really? Try the, try the pomegranate blueberry. It's delicious. Okay. <laughs> she can be okay with the air. It has really antioxidants. Really? Go. <laughs> really? Guaranteed. Guaranteed. No aftertaste. Exactly. Hey, but real talk, it's the most interesting man in LA. Be sure to follow me on IMK underscore West on Twitter and Instagram. Yo, Vegas weekend. I'm just kidding. Labor Day weekend. Be sure don't hit me up and ask me what's going on because I'm going to be busy. Okay. <laughs> well, busy. Tony's gonna be up at uh, in Las Vegas. I'm gonna be in Vegas I'm with the Cosmopolitan, sipping the Cosmopolitan with a model that's Cosmopolitan. Uh -huh. Ooh. I'm gonna be in Vegas Ooh, with Sharice nice. and TP. I got, my I got my beat bikini ready. There you go. I'm gonna be. Uh, you already know. No, <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> we good. I don't know. Thank right. you. Shouts out once again to Dwight, Jason, Quan, the whole crew, Rock the World, Rico, what's good? Rock the World forever, yo. Tony Rock. Beauty and the Beat Radio. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the drinks and the food. Really? Yo, sorry about the wrong Ciroc, really man. Really I knew you used to Ciroc. Show me a good time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we tried to. My bad on the Ciroc, man. It's all good. Okay.